Hey VC, it's Joe coming at you from Planet 13 and these are my vinyl pickups for October 2021. Before I show the albums I picked up, I just wanted to catch up. Uh, in case you're interested, life with me, it's pretty normal still. Um, not much new and exciting other than we had Thanksgiving recently because I'm in Canada. We celebrated it earlier. We celebrated it, I think, the first or second Monday in October. And uh, yeah, that was cool. That was really cool. Um, got to see some family I hadn't seen in two years, which was amazing. Uh, life starting to seem normal again, which I'm pretty happy with. Anyway, enough of my jibber jabber. Here are the albums I picked up. First album I picked up is the 2LP edition of Motorhead's Everything Louder Forever. And, uh, good, pretty good track listing here. Lots of cool stuff on here. I was on the fence. Do I get the 2LP? Do I get the 4LP? And I decided with the 2LP and I, I was kind of swayed by it because uh, a video Melinda Murphy put out about lazy listening as she kind of uh, phrased it. She might have phrased it some other different way, but just the fact that when you get a box set or a LP with so many LPs, you tend not to play it as much because it's just it's kind of a hassle to juggle all those vinyl albums. And that's why I went with the 2LP. Because I knew I'd listen to this more. And uh, do I really want to listen to four Motorhead albums in a row? I kind of do. But I'm, I'm probably more likely to listen to two of these LPs. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to pick up the uh, the CD of this, which will have all the, the four LPs on one or two CDs, and just use that in my car. I'm, I'm back at my office on a hybrid schedule. So I go in twice a week, and the commute in... Is like nine minutes, but the drive home is about 40 minutes. Just traffic for some reason. Driving home just swamps the road. I don't know why. Um, but 40 minutes is, is a good amount of time to play some CDs. So, yeah, happy about that. Um, this is a pretty cool set, though. Uh, you get a nice little gatefold. And uh, you get some cool inner sleeves with some photographs and again this is just the 2LP edition I'm loving this album too like I'm not a huge Motorhead fan I've seen them a few times live and they were fantastic but I'm not like a diehard fan I didn't know like half these songs on this greatest hits album um because I'm only really familiar with like the the bigger hits like Ace of Spades and Orgasmatron and Overkill and whatnot Killed by Death uh, but this is a nice little overview. Liked it, and I'm excited to pick up the CD version. Next album I picked up, album I've never heard before, but it's awesome. It's ACDC's Flick of the Switch. And this, I, I want to say I like this as much as like Highway to Hell and Back in Black. Do I think it's a better album than those two? No, but I like this quite a bit. I didn't know any of these songs. And I think this is the follow-up to For Those About to Rock, but it's not Mutt Lang doing the uh, production. It's ACDC doing their own um, production, I think. So this kind of sounds like Back in Black combined with the earthiness of Highway to Hell, I'd say. But there are some rocking songs on here. And yeah, I like ACDC. I'm not a massive fan, even though I'm, I have quite a few of their albums now. But uh, yeah, this was this one surprised me. I didn't expect it to be that good. I got it pretty dirt cheap. It was uh, ten dollars, brand new, and uh, a great album. I recommend it if you find it for a decent price. Pick it up. It's pretty good. Next album I picked up. Very excited for this. I just got it the other day because it came out on uh, October twenty eighth, and uh, I drove up to Montreal on the weekend to pick this up at a record store I like, uh, Montreal, for me to drive to. It's about 12 hours. Um, but I was up there briefly, uh, just buying some albums and uh, seeing some family. So I picked up uh, Typo Negative October Rust. It's a 2LP album. Um, very cool. Probably my favorite Typo album. It's between this and Bloody Kisses. Maybe, I actually, I probably like Bloody Kisses a little bit more. This one's a little tamer. 
It's got my favorite song, uh, Love It, Love You to Death. I think that's like their best song ever. It's an amazing song. It's very plush and just lots of vocal harmonies. And it's a beautiful song with, I guess, somewhat scary lyrics. It's, it's a very good song. Um, yeah, this is on a, this is an, this is a gatefold. This is done by a run out group. So you get some liner notes and two LP on like a green and black swirl vinyl. Comes with poly line sleeves, which I'm a big fan of. Love that. Uh, and you also get a poster, which I'll just pull it now to show you. Yeah, very happy with the packaging of this. Very cool. Very happy to have this. I was, you know, they put it at the box set. This was the only way to get this kind of affordability-wise before. Uh, they did a box set, and I was like, I can't really afford $270 for typo negatives uh, discography. I think it was about that in Canadian dollars. Probably a little cheaper in the States when you do the exchange rate and that. So... Yeah, I'm happy they released this because I really wanted this on vinyl. And now I'm at a crossroads with uh, Skid Row. Like they have the Atlantic years coming out. It's seven LPs, but it's only, I think, five albums. So you get the debut album. You get um, the follow-up, Slave to the Grind. You get Subhuman Race. You get Besides Ourselves, which is an EP. It's like five songs on there or seven, not very many. And then you get... Uh, a, a, EP, like a five, seven song EP with some live tracks. It's about 238 Canadian. And I'm like, do I really want to pay that much? Or do I just want to wait and just pick up the albums I want? So that's my big debate right now. And I'll let you know in December when I make that decision. Because I, I have it pre-ordered. It's on my wish list in Amazon. But I think, I think I'm going to cancel it and just kind of risk the hope that they release these Skid Row albums individually in the future. We'll see, though. There's FOMO, Fear of Missing Out. I've got that hardcore with that box set for some reason. Because I've been looking for those Skid Row albums for a while. Yeah. Next album I picked up, I uh, picked this up, uh, recommendation from Darcy Six Strings. Uh, I remember here watching a video with him. He picked this up, was uh, gave it a great review. So I, they wrote thanks Joel on it. I, I picked it up... Um, uh, just I found it online for an affordable price, a lot uh, cheaper than Amazon. And um, fantastic album. This band's out of Montreal, I believe, as well. So love this album. I was listening to it on Spotify for quite some time and then came down to a decent price, or I found it for a decent price online. Free shipping, uh, so pretty cool. And this is on like a red and black kind of vinyl. So yeah, love this one. There's one song on here. It's like most of the second side and it's like 17 minutes long. Uh, I forget what the song's called. Jack Luminous, I believe. Uh, but yeah, very cool. Very happy to have that. Now I'm kind of getting more into the soundtrack things of things. And the first soundtrack I picked up is... Demon Knight. So this is uh, Tales from the Crypt movie. Uh, came out in like 94, I want to say. Um, a lot of cool bands on here. You've got Pantera doing Cemetery Gates. So this is before Cemetery Gates. I, don't know, I guess Cemetery Gates would have been out for a while. you got Hey Man, Nice Shot by Filter. you got an, a song by Megadeth. Um, Ministry does a song. Machine Head, Melvins, Roland's Band, Biohazard, Sepultura. A lot of cool stuff. So, very happy to have this. I had it on CD as a kid, or as a teenager, and I saw this movie in the theater. I always liked it. It's got, like, Billy Zane and Jada Pinkett Smith in it, and Lowell from Wings. I forget his real name. Thomas Hayden Smith, maybe? And you got, yeah, a nice curl. I, I don't know what they call this. I don't even think this is it. Oh, clear with green and purple vinyl. So, yeah, that's what you got. Yeah, like this album a lot. Been listening to it a lot. I'm very happy with it. And again, I had that on CD. So happy to have it on vinyl. Next soundtrack I picked up, it's Children of the Corn. And this soundtrack is amazing. I never heard it before. I So I took a bit of a gamble. I kind of 
did the YouTube thing and listened to some clips, was enjoying it. And then I just uh, ordered the vinyl itself. The cover artist, uh, Ghoulish Gary, he lives in my hometown. So uh, I'd like to meet him one day, get him to sign some vinyl, because I have a lot of vinyl that he has drawn the, or done the artwork for. And nice gatefold here going on. Uh, track listing, very cool, kind of how they do that. Really has that Stephen King vibe, small town vibe that he kind of does. No polyline sleeve, um, but cool vinyl overall. Nice custom labels, red and yellow swirl, I think they call this. And I like this soundtrack a lot. Like, I was just so impressed with it. And something different they had inside. They had liner notes. Instead of liner notes on the sleeve, like a lot of people do, they just put it in, like, um, a sheet. And there's the front and back. When it came, the uh, the back was, like, facing the other way, so you couldn't read it. So I just kind of switched it around. There's nothing on these kind of cards. They're, like, on cardboard cards. It came in the plastic already. Yeah, and you get some interesting notes by the uh, composer and uh, Aaron Lupton, who I think also lives in my hometown as well. I'm, I follow him on Instagram. He's like a, he puts out like a lot of interesting stuff about soundtracks and did the Blood on Black Wax uh, book, which is like a book collecting a lot of soundtracks and stuff. Next album I picked up, perfect for Halloween. It's Halloween Kills. And I got the Waxwork exclusive for this. So it's got like a different variant than most others. And uh, I watched this movie. I had a lot of fun with it. It's not like a great movie. But it surprised me. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's very mean-spirited. But kind of spooky for Halloween. It's kind of like... Well, it's got the mean-spiritedness of Saw. But a lot of people like Saw. I always did too. Um, but that's... Yeah, it's... Just very violent, I guess, but kind of kind of good. I liked it. I don't recommend it. Soundtrack I liked a lot, and I'll show you the, the variant I got. Um, but yeah, custom inner sleeves with uh, Laurie Strode, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. She's not in it that much. She's mostly kind of in a hospital bed most of the movie. It's mostly um, her daughter in the movie and her daughter's daughter, and uh, yeah, I liked it. Vinyl looks pretty cool. So you get this like orange, black, and white kind of thing going on. And then on the flip side, it's kind of white instead of orange. Very cool looking. Uh, I like the soundtrack a lot. I, I don't think I can compare it. Some people say the, uh, the previous Halloween that came out in 2018. Score was a little better. Might be. I, I have to listen to them side by side, but I like this one a lot. And I was listening to it a lot during the spooky season. And another album I picked up from Waxwork around the same time was Day of the Dead. So this is George Romero's uh, third movie in the Night of the Living Dead series. This had been out of print for a while. It's back in print. Cool liner notes with some pictures. Um, yeah, track listing here. This is very kind of electronic, spooky kind of listening. And uh, with Waxwork, you always get some cool variants. I don't know what, I don't remember what they called this one. It's kind of like an earthy red, perhaps. And uh, the second LP is a little bit different, so I'll show that as well. It's more of a green. I'm colorblind, so I always get my colors wrong. It's kind of like a green, aqua, blue, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, happy to have that. And uh, what they did that was also very cool is um, they included some more liner notes, but they do it as like a like this newspaper. Because the start of the movie, this newspaper blows on the zombie's face, and they kind of recreated it with the headline and the, and such, but the text would be different. It's more uh, liner notes about the movie. So I thought that was cool. And yeah, I'm loving that soundtrack. So a lot of spooky listening to me for the Halloween season. Two more albums to show, and these are Christmas related because tis the season. And if you don't pick them up now, you're probably not going to get these. 
Uh, so this is Home Alone Christmas. It's like the best of the first two movies. Um, very Christmassy. This is on like a, a very uh, Christmas sweatery kind of vinyl. Red, green, and clear, I think they called it. Uh, yeah. Kind of cool. And I enjoyed this album. I'll probably enjoy it more around Christmas time. For years, I kind of avoided Christmas music because uh, I worked in the service industry for a long time as a bartender. So I did. Uh, I did. I was a supply teacher, trying to get full time teaching for a long time. Never really got full time. And at night, I would uh, bartend, and then uh, I just started bartending more and more. And then starting November first to January thirty first, or uh, yeah, January first. All you would hear was Christmas music every day. The same. If you work retail, you know the same thing. If you go to the mall even during Christmas, you know the same thing. So I did not want to hear Christmas music for the longest time. And now I kind of want to hear it. And then the next album I picked up, Christmassy, Mr. Hankey's Christmas Classics. This is just on black vinyl. Um, you get like an inner sheet, inner sheet going on here with all the songs and lyrics. And this is more of a comedy album. Here's the inner sleeve. I think there's a Scratch and Sniff brown album that smells like poo. This is not it. This is just on, on black. And uh, I think people were complaining it didn't really smell like poo. But who would complain about that? I don't know. Anyway, that is what I picked up. And until next time, cheers.